Hi and welcome back to my channel and keeping up with the theme of October I'm going to show you how to make some really cool tombstones as well as headstones in this particular video. Yes there is some crossover techniques from the Storm Giant video so make sure you go back and take a look at that one if you haven't seen it yet but in this particular video I'm going to show you two different ways to make these tombstones and headstones as well as three different painting techniques because if you've ever been in a cemetery you yourself have probably seen how no headstone looks exactly like the other unless the couple paid for it to be that way but also colors aren't exactly the same either so I wanted to make sure there was some variety of tones and colors and blending so that if you go about making your own little cemetery or graveyard whatever it is you want to do with these you can kind of mimic that look as well any questions take a look down below I'll be happy to answer them for you or you can email me at the email address it is in the about section of my channel so take a look at that too if you don't want to do that it is the crafting email at gmail.com anyways that is it for me right now take a look I hope you enjoy it as always enjoy and I'll see you later bye The first thing I'm going to do is start you off with the easier of the two tombstone headstone varieties and that is the sculpted variety. What I did is I used my Sculpey clay. Now this is the original kind where you will need to bake it afterwards. I prefer to use this kind simply because I'm a mom. I have to stop things sometimes and go do something else. This means I can go back to it and fix things while I go along and I don't have to worry about things drying out on me. If you have the time to sit down and devote to an air dry type of clay by all means go ahead and do that. In this case, what I did is I took a popsicle stick and I cut out some of the wood so that I could use that as a form to shape the tombstones that I wanted to create. And really what it boils down to is have fun with the shapes, try out different things. Here's sort of my lineup of shapes that I did. And I took a couple of them and I broke them in half so we had the cracked and broken headstones. And then I had some fun, I made one kind of look like a sheep's skull or a ram's skull rather. And it's just the type of thing where as you manipulate the clay and get a feel for it, you'll come up with ideas on how you can shape this to look like different forms and different types of headstones. So that's what I did for one variety. Next up will be the other one. Because I had leftover pieces from the Storm Giant tomb, I decided to make some smaller tombstones and headstones out of the leftover bits and pieces, and it actually grew into its own project as a result. So what I'm going to tell you is basically just go through your random supply of things, pull out items you think might look cool turned into a tombstone, and see what happens with it. In this case, you do want that Dollar Tree foam again, and it's the same concept. Imprint the pieces that you want to use onto the foam. From there, you can start shaping out how your headstone is going to look, and take it from there. I am also including a clip so you can see my making one in action, so you can see the process from start to end. So here you see the three pieces I wanted to use for this particular tombstone and it took a little playing around with and a little manipulation just because it's trying to figure out how I want these to look. Once I had them in position I sort of sketched out with a toothpick onto the foam the shape I wanted for the headstone. And then once I knew it was what I wanted to do, press down, get those imprints in and then it's a few last things you have to worry about flopping around on top of the foam. So you get that all squared away, add in a few more details with that toothpick. I did some cracks, I did some little etching things on the sides here and there. And then the next step you want to do is just take your X-Acto knife and carefully cut it out. Try and keep your strokes smooth and even and get that piece popped out of the rest of your board. And then I take my metal nail file and I will go through and even out any edges. I also took the X-Acto knife and beveled some of the edges just to give it more of the stone worn out look outside in the weather look. Um, again, a lot of this is similar stuff that I did in the previous video, but I wanted you to see this. So that's really how you get these going. And then the next thing you want to start doing, obviously, is taking your low heat hot glue gun and hot gluing those pieces back onto your tombstone piece once you've gotten everything else smoothed out and marked up as you want. So here's an example of one of the tombstones with all of its pieces glued on and the next photo right here are the others that I created using the same concept. So as you can see you can have a lot of fun just using some random items. 
Now this clip is showing you how I went about making the tomb covers as well as the smaller grave markers. Again, a lot of this is the same concept as before, but it's scaled down as you can see. Uh, so these are about an inch and a half in length and an inch wide for those tomb covers. And the grave markers are even smaller than that. I believe those are a half inch by an inch and uh, they, they add a little bit extra and they are the kind that lie flat against the ground. So again, bevel your edges. I took the file and I would smooth out as well. And you can also go through and find more things to put on top of it to make them each look unique and different on their own. And the end result is also another really cool look that I was quite happy with in terms of variety and just some difference to sort of excite your players. When you have your tomb covers and your grave markers all pulled together and hot glued on the pieces you want each one to have, what you want to do is take some cereal box cardboard, smear on some glue stick, and then wiggle your pieces on that and allow it to dry completely. And that way it's just going to give a little bit more reinforcement to the back of these pieces since you're really not going to see them, but you do want to make sure they don't curl up on you. And then as you can see here, here's the collection of the headstones, tombstones, tomb covers, and grave markers that I created using the second method. Just keep in mind, anything that's upright, you don't have to worry about doing that cardboard. Anything that does go on the ground, you want to do make sure you put that layer of cardboard underneath and then just carefully cut it out with the X-Acto knife before we move on to the next part, which is making sure we get everything primed. What I did at this point was take my mix of equal parts white glue, dark brown, and black mixed thoroughly together, and I painted every little bit that I had for the tombstones and the headstones and the grave markers. And yes, I did this before creating the bases because I wanted to make sure I had every nook and cranny of the upright pieces addressed since sometimes it can get a little awkward painting those pieces once they are on a base. So when you get those all set and they're dry, that's where you can start focusing on making your bases. What I did for the bases is I took a larger piece of that Dollar Tree foam and I put that on some more cardboard, cereal box type of cardboard uh, with a glue stick and let that dry. I think I gave that overnight, but make sure it's completely dry before what you're gonna do is basically take your X-Acto knife and cut out lengths for your bases. And in this case, I had the bases a half inch wide. In terms of length, I varied that based upon each individual tombstone. When you have all the bases set and ready to go for your upright pieces, take your hot glue, low temp hot glue gun, and hot glue those pieces to their individual bases once everything's cool. Then comes the time where you're gonna go back to that mixture and paint everything uh, where the base is. And some of the pieces did need an extra little layer of paint, so that's gonna be up to you as well as to how dark of a coat you want to start off with. But that's what I did to get these pieces prepped for the next step, which is going to be the different painting techniques and styles that I'm going to share with you. Essentially, I'm providing you with three different paint options for these tombstones and gravestones just to give it that variety I talked about in the introduction. So first round is this grouping of paints, which I have taken a picture of, and again, these will be in the description. And then what you're going to do moving from left to right in that photo is put those paints onto your tombstones using the cosmetic wedge technique that I like to use for these, especially because it has those smaller pieces, the paints will get into those nooks and crannies a lot easier with the cosmetic sponge as opposed to other methods of painting if you want to give this more of a real true stone-like effect. So in this case it was the medium brown, then it moved to yellow, and then to peach. From the peach it moved to the gold metallic, and then I finished that up with the parchment. So that was all done using the cosmetic wedge. This next option of paints is going to give you a lighter gray coloring with the final result. So you start off with the gray, move on to the granite gray, then you shift over to a silver, and you're going to finish your sponging with the suede color. So that's how the second option is done, again, using that cosmetic wedge.
The third option definitely uses less colors, however I wanted to play off the dark base color because I wanted a grouping of these tombstones to have darker tones to them as opposed to the light tans and the light grays with the other two. So in this case you have your graphite gray, your olive green, and then your dark gray that I'll be using in that sequence. Again, cosmetic wedge form and go through your one, two, three and let everything dry before we move on to the next step. I wanted just to take a moment to show you the three different options totally dry at this point so you can see the variety that you're already getting with these different paint combinations. It is also at this point when everything is dry you are going to do a black wash on both sides. I recommend doing this where you can let it dry overnight too just to make sure everything is set and ready to go when it comes time to do a dry brush. What I did here for the dry brushing is I took a picture of each tombstone blend next to the type of paint that I used for dry brushing each of these pieces. And I found that these switching around of colors definitely helped highlight those higher areas and little details a lot better than if I had stayed with a progression of just a lighter color than before. Um, so take a look at this and you can see how I did the dry brushing and when it dries it definitely is worth doing. So make sure you do not forget this particular step as well. Now this next phase ends up giving you what looks like a moss covered, lichen covered, tombstone, headstone, grave marker grouping. And this is also a point where after you do this part, you can stop if you so choose. Or you can keep watching and see how I added on some different plants and other matter to give these a little bit more of a zhuzhed effect um, if you want to have fun with it. So to get started, I use these two different color greens, starting off with the darker green, then moving on to the lighter green. And it is the darker green and the lighter green both put on with a stencil brush. Now these are different than normal paint brushes. They are stiff, they are durable, and they are harder to work with in terms of they don't smooth out like a normal brush does, but these are great for stippling color on to other items. So a stencil brush is definitely the way to go with this one for a finer, more controlled method that is similar looking to a sponge, but not as widespread. And now this video clip is going to show you how you go about using this stencil brush. You dip it into the paint, you stipple it onto some newspaper, and then you'll move on to the piece itself and use that up and down motion to transfer the paint onto the piece. And it goes on little by little, which is great, so you can have better control over just how much you're putting on in each area, so you don't have to have it completely covered in green if you don't want to, or you can put a little bit more on if you need to. Um, so it's definitely something I do recommend using brush-wise because it gives you the effect you want without losing in complete control because sometimes that sponge can have a little bit more on it than you expected. The key component here is to make sure you do dab off the excess paint before moving it on to the other piece. And here's a shot of the tombstones with just that first layer of the dark green stippled onto them. And here again I'm showing you how to add on the lighter green using the same method with the stencil brush and stippling onto the gravestones. And I found that some of them needed a little bit more of the lighter, others took a little bit less. That's going to be a personal preference, but the end result I was really happy with. And because of the variation with the different colors, I wanted to show you each color getting that lighter green as well. So here's the darkest one, I already did the previous one, and you'll get to see the next one in action with that light green. And here's a still shot of all of the color variations with the two different greens on them, completely dry. And you can see they now have that nice aged outdoor stone look that I wanted to achieve for these grave markers and headstones and tombstones. I'm calling this section optional because it's not something you have to go out and do to every single tombstone or it may be something you want to do to just a few of them just to get some visual interest going. First thing I'm going to put to use is some twine. It has a really great dried grass look to it. Then I also picked up these moss covered stones at Dollar Tree. If you cut them in half it's just that styrofoam. 
but when you cut them in half, you can peel off that fuzzy layer that's on top of them. And then I also pulled out some of the plastic plants that I have in sheets that I found at Michael's. Uh, all of these come in really handy for adding some different details to the tombstones to make it look like they've been in a graveyard or a cemetery for a while and they aren't freshly dug graves with freshly made tombstones and headstones. So these are the different options I had going on for those. And then what I'm going to do is go through here and show you how I created some of these looks using these different elements. So the first one is going to be that moss. So what you do is you take your nail and you peel it off of that foam piece and then what I try and do is peel off as much of that white as I can and then find where I want to place it on the item and then I'll use my low heat glue gun put a little bit on and then I put that sheet of moss on top of that and you want to let it cool but it'll hold on to it for you and it looks great once it's on you may need to trim a little excess off and that's okay too but do keep that in mind really it boils down to how much of this you want to put on your tombstone in terms of how many areas you're going to cover um, I just kind of did it here and there but that's really your call When it comes down to these plastic plants, really it's a matter of cutting them up so they're better scaled to the size of your items. So you don't have to take the full big piece of the plastic plant that you have. I find it helps just to cut them up into smaller pieces and then start gluing them around where you want them to be. Working in clusters definitely gives you an advantage as well because then it starts looking like smaller plants, not pieces cut off of a larger plant. Uh, the key with these plastic plants is to make sure you are using your low heat glue gun. Anything hotter than a low heat glue gun, yes, will melt the plastic plant material. I've learned this from experience from working at the flower shop so trust me on this low heat is the way to go and really it's going to be a matter of aesthetic on your part figure out where you want these pieces to be how many of these pieces get the same types of plastic plants I find variety gives it more of a realistic look in the long run so have a few of your tombstones have a particular kind while another set has another kind and when you start mixing them together the end result is absolutely fantastic and it gives you more of a realistic nod to how things actually look in a graveyard and in a cemetery and if you're worried about cutting up these pieces, don't be, because again, with the low heat glue gun, you can also glue things back together here and there if you've realized you've cut something a little bit too short and you want to add some length to it. But take those smaller pieces, move them around, hold it up to different parts of the tombstones because it's going to give you a different perspective on how this could work on each piece. It's worth taking that time to make sure you have each piece addressed because then it gives them each their own unique presence. And because of that, it gives you more uses even outside of their being in a graveyard or a cemetery. They could stand individually on their own somewhere else on a different type of terrain. But as I said before, this step is something that is optional to you. You don't have to do it. Personally, I like going that little extra step forward and adding that little bit more to it because in the long run, I personally feel it just gives your piece and it gives your table that absolute wow factor that is going to knock your players off their feet. And the last thing you want to be sure of is just to make sure you pull off those threads of hot glue uh, because they do start to sneak up on you. So just go through when you're done and pull them off, but make sure the glue has cooled first. When using this twine as a grass, what you're going to want to do is make sure you twist the twine tightly so that when you cut it, it doesn't all fall apart on you and make sure you have a nice tight grip on the one end. Then you'll put some hot glue on that end. Make sure you kind of swirl it around a little bit so that all the possible strands get that hot glue on them. And then you're going to press it up against your tombstone and hold it until you know the glue has set. Do the same thing again, depending on how thick and full you want this dried grass to look but you want to make sure you have these pieces cooled before you move on to the next part, which is going to be to fluff out these strands and thinning it out so that it's going to start looking more like dried long lengths of grass that are growing out of the cracks of your tombs as opposed to twine as it started out. But that's how it look, looks when you get it on there. Really when it comes to the broken headstones, all you need to do is just take some hot glue and glue the top portion of the headstone down at the base of the headstone. And I chose to put in some pieces of plants as well, just to give it more of an overgrown, older look to it. But really it's that simple for those particular pieces.
And that pretty much brings this video to a close. Here are some still showing you the variety of the color of the plants. And it's amazing how just doing some different things give the same items built the same way, completely different looks to one another, but still a cohesive feeling to them when put together in a grouping. Thank you so much for watching. Any questions, please reach out to me. I'm more than happy to help you out. I hope you've enjoyed this and I'll see you next time around. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. And I just think this thing refocused on me again. Mm. Hi, and welcome back to my channel. In keeping up with a month of, there <laughs> goes a cat tail. <laughs> I grew a tail. Try it again. We do it again? Yes, we do it again. And if you, uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba -ba I can't talk today. What's going on? Paint, the paint, the paint, the paint, the paint, the paint. No, you're not helping. You really are not helping. Or you can email me. Email me. Can you email me? Well, can you? You want to be a part of this again? <laughs> no, you turn off now. You know it's a problem when you have cold hands and a laptop that you can touch the screen to turn things off. It doesn't think you're there. Try it one more time. Off.